Welcome back. I want to do a few more examples of integration by parts, so let's go ahead and get started. Here we have our formula for the integration by parts, so we're going to be given an integral. We'll let part of it equal u and the remaining part equal dv. Once we choose our u, we'll find differential u, and once we choose dv, we'll integrate to find v. Then we will apply the integration by parts formula and see if the resulting integral is easier to determine or if maybe we have to use integration by parts again. Again, I did review these on the last video, so you may want to watch that video first. Let's take a look at this example. Here's our integration by parts formula. Let's start by letting this x equal our u. Therefore, our differential u, or du, would equal the derivative of this, which would be 1 times dx. Now, the remaining part of the integral x plus 2 to the 7th dx would have to be our dv. Therefore, in order to find v, we would have to integrate both sides of this equation. When we integrate both sides of this to find v, you may wonder if you have to perform substitution. But since u would be x plus 2 and u prime would be equal to 1, u substitution is not necessary. Therefore, when we apply the power rule for integration, we'll add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that new exponent. Now let's apply our integration by parts formula and see if this integral is easier to integrate. So this is equal to u times v. So when I write this product, I'm going to rewrite it as 1 eighth x times x plus 2 to the eighth power minus the integral of v du. Well, here's our v, and du is equal to dx. So in fact, this x was the problem on this original integral, and now the x is no longer there. We can integrate this just as we integrated this to find v. We may be thinking we have to perform integration by substitution, but if this is our u, du is going to be equal to 1 dx. So in fact, we don't have to do the substitution. So applying the power rule, we'll add 1 to this exponent, divide by the new exponent, and add our constant of integration. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Here we'd have a denominator of 72, and then of course our plus c. Let's take a look at this example. Now the first thing I notice here is we could apply the power property of logarithms and rewrite this as the integral of 2x natural log x dx. Now notice I chose to leave the 2 inside the integral symbol. I could factor it out. But for me, it's easier to keep track of all these substitutions if I leave it in this form. So we need to pick our u. Typically, when the log function is involved, that's going to be our u. Let's try it. Again, if it doesn't work, we'll just switch and try something else. So du would equal 1 over x dx. And whatever's left must be our dv. So in order to find v, we have to integrate both sides. Add 1 to our exponent and then divide by 2. So we'd have x squared. Let's apply our formula. This is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. This looks good. This will simplify nicely. So it's simplified to one factor of x. So now we can apply the basic power rule. So now we can apply the power rule of integration add 1, divide by 2 for our antiderivative. Now let's take a look at a couple definite integrals. Here if we let u equal 2x plus 1, du will be rather simple, so let's try that. So differential u will equal 2dx. So the remaining part will have to be our dv. Since we know we have to integrate, let's rewrite this as e to the power of negative x dx. Again, if I move this up to the numerator, it would change the sign of the exponent on base e. So to integrate this, we would have a u of negative x and a du of negative dx, or negative du is equal to dx. So when we integrate both sides of this equation, we're going to have v equal to negative e to the power of negative x. So what we did here is we performed substitution in order to integrate both sides. So when we apply our integration by parts formula, we'll have our 
u times v minus the integral of v du. Let's clean this up. When we integrate this, we're going to have to perform u substitution as we did over here. So we will have an antiderivative of negative e to the negative x power. And this is a definite integral, so I have to evaluate this at 1 and 0. So when we sub in a 1, we'd have this, and these are actually like terms. We'd have a negative 5 e to the negative 1 minus, over here, remember, e to the 0 would be 1. So we'd have a negative 1 minus 2 or a negative 3. And the final result would be approximately 1.1606. Now we can check this on the graphing calculator since it is a definite integral. Let's go ahead and do that. So if we hit math option 9, type in the original integrand. We can verify our work. Let's take a look at one more. Right away when I see natural log x, I'm going to let that part equal u u will equal 1 over x dx. So if that's u, then all of this will have to be dv. I'll rewrite this as x to the power of negative 2 dx. Integrate both sides to obtain a v value of add 1 and divide by the new exponent. Apply the integration by parts formula. u times v minus integral of v du, simplify this, have plus, this would be x to the power of negative 2 dx. Applying the power rule here, we'd have x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1, which would give us a minus 1 over x, again evaluated at e and 1. Remember that natural log e is equal to 1 and natural log 1 is equal to 0. The final result here is approximately 0.2642. Again, we can check this on the graphing calculator, um, but I won't take the time for it now. I hope these additional examples were helpful. Again, thank you for watching.